Never before have I met an Adiran man so hesitant to speak his mind. I'm not hesitant. I just, uh, like to consider my words carefully. So talk, amigo. Mm hmm. Well, welcome to Bright Helm Recording, travelers of the internet. This is your host, Master Barkle. We left off doing some side questing in uh, Defiance Bay to get the reputation up. It still hasn't gone up very much, so we're going to move on to another main quest. We got a few of them. We're going to try to avoid uh, Deerford Village. So, Undying Heritage. There's a derelict district in Defiance Bay with an ancient tower. A strange man, working machine, uh, scar over her heart on a woman. Um, she holds the key to whatever happened. Um, that heritage part, I think, is a big clue as to where it is. I think. I think if I'm right, I'm... If I'm right about this. Heritage Hill. Let's head to Heritage Hill. See why we're not allowed to be there. Best turn around, traveler. Heritage Hill is closed. Why is that? Well met, friend. Sorry, but this district's closed by order of the Duke himself. What's going on? Look, even if I were allowed to tell you, I don't rightly know. All I can say is that whatever it is, started about two months ago. The guards that closed the gate talked to something unnatural that still wakes them in the middle of the night. I don't want to know any more than that. Well, how do I get inside? Trust me, you don't wanna. But if you were really set on seeing this for yourself, I suppose you'd have to give permission from Wyla that they keep in first fires. Would some coin work? Look, we could get in a lot of trouble for this. But then, it's not like you could make things worse in there. You hand us a thousand pawns and I'll open the gate. And then look the other way. And don't bother trying to bargain us down. That money will make sure our families are okay if we are found out. A thousand copper or coin pieces. Or maybe it's copper pieces. I can't remember. Well, we gotta do something. Okay, then. Good luck with whatever you're doing in there. Yeah, let's find out what we're doing in here. Oh. That's a skeleton. The dead walk. So. I, I kind of guess why, uh, why the hill's closed off. The dead are walking. Um. If it has to do with the leaden key... They're stealing souls from everybody. Like they're doing the children. And here they decided, let's take out an entire district of Defiance Bay. Something twitches and shambles in the darkness between the slats. A rancid draft creeps from the house. So someone's dead in there. But I can't get in. Fine. I don't want your treasures anyway. A simple test. That's settled. You think there's traps in the district? Probably not. Probably in the... In houses or stuff there may be traps. I'll see what I can find. No trap. That's settled. Okay. Uh -huh. Spellwood amulet. Money. Hopefully we make our money do. Back from what we gave those guards. Let's add claw mark score this vault. Are these vaults or uh, mausoleums? Is that the right word? A, a fanciful graveyard. Acquire 
by the proper key, huh? The inscription underneath the family crest reads, Valtus. He's headless. A small plaque at the base reads, Freedom above all, Admeth Hadrid. Oh yeah, I remember that guy. He was, he was here, like, he was one of the first colonists here. And he, um... He either fought the Glanfathans or Idea when they came back. Nice and quiet. And the fire shows me something new. Yeah, I knew it. I knew there was traps in here. There we go. Uh, pretty plain. <clears throat> Just some plate armor. Treasure. I can do that. That's settled. Money. What do we got over here? We're making the lap around the district. Vaultus Manor. Maybe I can get the key to their little vault or something. Ooh. Treasure. From here, the mansion appears deserted. And what does the flame reveal? What does the flame reveal? Oh. They look zombie. Saida, let us in. Be safe. Come out now. Open the door, Saida. The female Dargul sniffs the air and whirls around hissing. Survivor. Okay. Or were they? I can do that. Or were they? That's settled. There's somebody alive in here. Saida, Saida, whatever her name was. Its name. Voltus groundskeeper letter. This is a note addressed to the household staff. Please see to it that the family mausoleum is swept and the marble polished. This key is hanging, as always, in the kitchen by the oven. Okay. So that's where the key is. Ooh, is that cat? Some money. One light shines from behind the map. It's a ragged hole to the outside, as if somebody dug through. So, somebody got out. Presumably the somebody that they were after. The Voltus Manor key. This doesn't look like the kitchen to me, but a simple test. Maybe I'm mistaken. That's settled. Alrighty. Oh hey. lot more tools. Okay. That's a big table. Lord Voltus's will. Does it include Roland Tolstag? A last will and testament has been carefully drawn up on a stained piece of sackcloth. It lists Lord Valtus's various titles and holdings, ending with the following. Should no member of my family survive, it is my wish that my wealth and property be dispensed to the Crucible Knights. Let my wife and children and me be buried with my forebears in the Valtus family tomb. At the right hand of Duke Hadrit, signed Valerio Valtus, fifth lord of House Valtus. Well, dang it. I don't get the inheritance. <sighs> Still gonna steal his eggs. Nice beer. This seems to be the hook mentioned in the letter, but the mausoleum key is missing. Okay, go to the Vaultus Mausoleum. Broken chairs, upended tables, and shattered vases block the stairs. Splintered planks shift precariously. So presumably, whoever got out went to the mausoleum right over here. Maybe they thought they would be safe there. Turns out there's zombies in a mausoleum. Who would have guessed it? Or maybe not. Oh, is it a child? Light, flame, and sound. The little girl cowers in the back of the tomb. Her face is streaked with dirt, 
And even in the shadows, you can tell she's far too thin. She watches you, holding her breath. Is this what you kids do for fun these days? She inches into the candlelight. Her clothes are little more than filthy rags now, but ripped and stained fabric looks like embroidered silk. You have to be quiet. Noise brings the hungry people. Kid, what are you doing here with all the, the hungry people, as you so claim, right? Are you a member of Valtus' family? Probably. She's probably a little girl of Valtus. I guess that makes more sense. I thought she was just some dumb kid that wandered into the Heritage Hill and... Um... Matiko, how did she survive in this place? My name is Saida. Are you hiding from them too? She watches the door of the vault, her eyes wide and careful. You need to get out of here. Is it safe? Are the hungry people out there? Uh, yeah, it's still dangerous. Main gate is clear. So long as you run the sensible route, you should be fine. I won't let anything catch me. I promise. Okay. Alrighty. I'm gonna loot the mausoleum, though. Nestled among the candles are the odds and ends of a patchwork family memorial. Valiant Lucia's, a cameo etching of a woman in finery, and a turquoise necklace. These vaults are sealed shut and sticky with cobwebs. Ooh, money. Ah! A recent scarab figurine. Money. I think we've made a thousand now. Haven't seen no tower, though. It's not what I think is a tower, though. We still have good bit of map to explore. Grave down. This mausoleum has been sealed tight. Money. Some revenants. Grave down. Bigger slower zombies. Crockware, stale foodstuffs, and once priceless faces, now chipped and cracked. Fill the wagon. Camping supplies, nice. Got some white leaf. What do we get over here? Money! What's in this house? What's that? These stale loaves are as hard as rocks. Some deer cup. What we got over here? Treasure. A simple test. That settled. <coughs> Sweet silver louche. Golden ducks. I can do that. That settled. Ahoy there, prisoners. Have you treasure for me? Oh ho! Spider fingers. Cool. Something or someone snapped this candelabra in two. It looks like a someone. Like there's a skeleton there, but they're very, very dried out. You, you you're not one of our council servants. Please, you've got to get us out of here before she feeds on us. What? We're just groundskeepers. When the district fell into chaos, I got the took us in. Said we'd be safe until the knights got things under control. Instead, she locked us in here. Every week, one of those monsters who serves her comes in and takes one of us away. I don't know what she's doing, but sometimes we can hear the screams. Please, get us out of here. Well, the door's open. Just run on out. Thank you. I'll never forget this. Alright. Uh, that, that's a problem solved. Who's Icantha? This one? Oh, you're Icantha. So are you zombie... Mommy? Left out to rot, these potatoes are covered with wet, rank-smelling bruises. A woman bends over a roaring fireplace, feeding a splintered chair leg into it. 
As you get closer, you notice something unnatural about her. A certain pallor to her skin. A lack of movement beneath her flesh, even while her arms execute deft, efficient movements. And then you see the puckered flesh, ragged and bloodless over her heart. Unnatural creature. We should correct it. Send it scampering back to the foulest depths of animancy from whence it came. It's rude to stare, you know. <laughs> Don't worry. I've no mind to start anything with you. After all, I've stayed in such good shape by choosing my meals carefully. Uh, I saw you in a vision? Maybe. <laughs> Believe me, I've heard that line before. I've, I came across a group of people in the back room. I hope you didn't disturb them. Rounding them up is quite the chore. Do you know what happened here? An incredible act of animancy. Of a magnitude this part of the world likely hasn't seen since Anguithin times. Someone found something very powerful and ancient. And I'd bet my own preserved life it wasn't Aldhelm or his lovely assistant. Um, that doesn't explain anything. Because someone found a way to tether their souls to their bodies, don't you see? She taps his skull with an impatient finger. So when the heart stops beating, when the blood stops flowing, their bodies still animate, and with a newfound hunger, she turns back to the fire. Those that can feed it with living flesh and essence stay strong and sharp. Those that can't degenerate quickly. Well, about this old helm fella. His name barely merits repeating. He's a charlatan who liked to dig up pretty artifacts and call himself a scholar. The pity with animancy these days is that just about anyone can claim to be an expert. I see. Um, well, how about I tell you this? I'm a watcher. Like, for real, for real. I truly doubt that. I'm telling the truth. Who are you? A survivor, by the grace of my own careful preparations. When I heard the claws scrabbling at the door outside, I took care of matters myself. And since then, I've been careful to keep myself fresh and fed. Well, I guess that is kind of believable. A survivor. I thought you were going to give me some... Stuff like, oh, I'm a watcher. And I'll be like, mm, no, you're not. I'm a watcher. But I guess... I guess I need to get going. I guess you're not the lady I saw in the vision. Huh. That was fruitless. Oh, loot. Forgot to get them. Revenants. Get, get stuff. Not a problem. Blood moss. And we're right round back where we were. Where does this go? Chugs. Alrighty. What have we down here? Oh, treasure. Grappling hook. Is this the tower? It's really tall. Tower. Oh, how convenient. It's named Tower. The massive stone door of the tower is sealed, and there doesn't appear to be any way of opening it. Oh, oh I know the words. I don't know what the words were, but it opened. You hear rumbles and clinks from hidden tumblers as the door unlocks. Presumably something in Gwethan. Oh, more ghouls in here. Thought it was safe. It wasn't. <coughs> Loot. Oh. Crumpled page from Aldhelm's journal. Day 7. A week of study and we're still none the wiser about this device. Trindig remains optimistic. I don't. 
know what I'd do without his spirit. And Trindig's letter. Dearest mother and father, you will be pleased to hear that I've learned much already since coming to the city. There are many incredible ruins nearby, and Master Greg has allowed me to accompany him on a number of expeditions. I'm writing to you from inside an ancient Anguithan tower. There's an entire district built up around it, but the locals have mostly left the tower untouched. They have let us set up temporary living quarters here so our work can continue uninterrupted. It is an unsettling place at times, but Master Greg has been a constant comfort. And he is quick to remind me that the things we learn from this tower may one day help us find a cure for Widewind's legacy. I'd better get some rest now. Mr. Greg likes to get an early start to the day. All my love, Trindig. Okay. Well. Oh. Trindig is quite an optimistic fellow, ain't he? I was reading that, though. As it shimmers and pulsates within the strange device. Alright. Now we'll fight you, skeletons. Oh, treasure. Is that the bed? Patting the scratchy old coverlet thickens the air with dust. No one has used this bed in weeks. That's a really long bed. Like, you could fit, like, two or three people on that. Somebody has got some long, long legs. Oh, more skeletons. Rave does the last These beds are of much more reasonable size right here. These they seem like they could hold a human. Yeah, we watched read that one. But this one, page from Old Helm's journal. Day two, we've completed our measurements of the machine, thanks to Trinidig's youthful agility. Trinidig. Further examination is required to discover its ex intended use. Okay. So Trinidig was a young fellow. The mattress is lumpy and smells of old straw, but whoever slept here last made it neatly. Okay. Um, looks like that's all down here. So up to the second story. Some money. Sweet. Oh, Your zombies. Loot. Mine. Sweet. Folded page from Old Helm's journal. Day 10. Patrons grow impatient with a lack of quantifiable results. They should drag themselves out of their mansions and spend a few nights here if they think it's so easy. So your patrons are nobles. And they're wanting to further Andamancy in hopes of curing Widewind's legacy. Everyone's wanting to cure it. The pulling, pounding energy of the machine feels even stronger up here. Like, gray bearded man is all about, you know, furthering the gods' goals and whatnot. And I I'm betting he's the one who's causing Widewind's legacy. By using the Anguithan machines the way he's doing it. Because all of it seems like Audra made and Audra chiseled, stuff like that. And Audras are the conduits of the soul, so to say. And he is. He's funneling all of the souls in the nearby area into the Audra and just holding them in. Like. Is he preparing nuclear war or something? Could, like, the Audra be expelled in such a, a rapid manner and cause issues? Because that could be a problem. Or does the Audra, like, go down into the veins of the world to, like, the core or something? I don't know. But I feel like Animancy may not be the way to solve Widewind's legacy. Right, so I th I'm thinking Animancy may need to be stopped, or at least put on a hold for now. The works of the Inguithans, a comprehensive guide. The scroll contains a pen and ink diagram of the Audra device running through the tower. Despite copious measurements and carefully drawn detail, it gives no indication of the machine's purpose. Ah, so we're fumbling around in the dark. 
Wonderful. Seems that that's all Animancy's doing of late. Especially with Grey Bearded Man leading their notes astray. Page from Old Helm's Journal. Day 11. Finally got out of the tower to clear our heads. Beasts, take the patrons. We'll finish the study on our own terms. Our own time. Just as I said as much to Trindig, the sky came to life with stray lightning. I said it's a good omen, but the poor lad spooked. Only cure for that is a good night's sleep. So now Aldhelm's the one who's... I feel like he's more spiteful than full of spirit. Trindig is losing hope, I'm guessing. Aldhelm is like, no, we gotta, we gotta finish it because those darn nobles... Who? Noise. Letter from Icantha. Oh, is Icantha the patron who's been funding everything? That might make some sense. Aldhelm, I did indeed receive your recent summons, as well as the two that came before it. I've been waiting for you to present yourself on my doorstep so that I could give you my answer in person. A firm and unwavering no. I won't help you, in fact. I relish the idea of you and your team of glorified engineers sitting in the tower, sweating over the runes I've studied for years. Nothing gives me greater pleasure than knowing that my research, which you've long disparaged, is the missing piece in your mundane little puzzle. As you well know, it's knowledge I've always valued. I'm just around the corner, and I encourage you to find me should you wish to rehash the conversation in person. Yours truly, Icantha. So maybe Icantha isn't the patron. But she definitely seems the spiteful sort. It seems like there's two two uh, researchers who don't get along with each other very well. And now they're trying to spite one another. By like, oh, I, I told you I could do it all by myself. And the other one's like, no, no, you need my research because I know more than you do. I feel like that's just putting the hold on animancy once again. Think about it. The less I think it's an animancy problem, and it's more a people problem. Let's try this configuration. Still nothing. Confounded device. Yeah, I'm thinking we just need to get rid of people, and animancy will sort itself out, maybe. Oh, hey, I, re I recognize this machine. This is what awakened me. Standing near the device feels like being blown about by a storm gale. The stone steps hum with energy. Squirrel! Sounds quiet. Birds are just flying through the tower. I'm surprised they got birds. Wow, is that Heritage Hill down there? Wow, we're way up. Well, I guess we'll talk to Aldhelm here. A man hunches over the strange mechanism. His spine is sharp a ridge rising from his arched back. He's barely clothed in filthy rags, and the patches of skin you see are mottled green. A spoiled stench emanates from him. He's so intent on his work that he doesn't notice you until your shadow falls over him. Uh, I think we got the shadows in the wrong place. When he turns and sees you, he snarls and scuttles behind the Adra pedestal. Only his bare teeth seem to have escaped decay. His eyes are yellowed and bloodshot, but they flicker with intelligence. He averts his gaze and holds a hand in front of his face. Alright, easy there, Gollum. Shouldn't be here. What do you want? I just... Uh, I, uh, w what happened? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know what's going on here either. But I make sure to get my money's worth because I paid a thousand coins to the guard at the gate to get in here, and like, it's pretty fun adventure so far. Plenty of treasure. I've looted a few mausoleums and vaults. Um, do you have any treasure, Bunny Hat? Or, or wait, no, you're Old Helm. You're the Oh, your treasure was inside the tower. I already stole it. Yeah. Forgive me. 
Forgive me. Unless you have treasure on your person. Um. Research. We came to do research on the tower. Some commission from gods. It hardly matters now. I mean, a commission from the gods? Sounds like a hefty price, if I'm being honest. Like, gods, they don't just give you, like, two or three copper pieces. They're like, here's you this plus three legendary weapon of ultimate destruction, whatnot. So, that'd be pretty cool. If I had a copper skate for every fool animancer whose thirst for knowledge led to a disaster, well, I never would have ended up at Gilded Vale. That's for sure. What are you talking about, Aloth? What? Stick to the present. Or I'll just tell him to keep talking. Something happened on our eleventh night. Lights in the sky and a static charge in the air. But we were so careful. We were staying in the chambers below. Trindig, my assistant, said he saw a robed figure lurking around the tower, wore a mask, carried knives at his sides. A trick of shadows, I told him. The next morning we felt strange, like we hadn't eaten in weeks. So dazed that we didn't at first notice the blood around our beds, the strange wounds that had appeared overnight. And the machine, this cursed spire, dormant for 2,000 years, lifeless through hundreds of our experiments, and we wake that morning to find it spinning on its own. On its own! How can we stop what we couldn't start? Um, you didn't start it. Uh, it was that, that robed figure. He had a gray beard, didn't he? Yeah, he's awakening you. I think. You're going to be a watcher too. Good luck sleeping. As exciting as the prospect of a living machine may be, I suspect that given mention of a machine and a masked figure both, there is another explanation. Years I've been doing this. Years. I know how these things work, but I, I don't know how this happened. I know where to go. That's the problem. Their souls are trapped here like flies in a jar, clinging to rotting meat. It sounds like you have a small idea of what is going on. And you haven't been doing this for years. You only had, like, journal pages up to, like, day, what, 11 or 12 down the stairs? And the guards said this happened two months ago. So... At the longest, I'd say three months you've been doing this, right? Still fairly new. Still fairly uh, unskilled, I'd say. And you're not Master Greg that Trindig was talking about. So where's Master Greg? Hmm? Icantha seems to know more than you, yet she doesn't want to give me any answers either. Um, you seem to only know about the machine. As opposed to the district itself. Um, what does the machine have to do with souls? Because if it's anything like what my experience is, it, it'll awaken you. It'll put a soul, another souls in you, and you'll become a watcher, or something like that. No time to slow down, but I, I can explain. Hold a magnet over iron splinters, and they stick, yes? Rub your hand over weir wool, and the hair of your head will follow it. So it is with this machine. Okay, so it's a magnet for the souls. So how do we get it to stop being a magnet? It has the power to manipulate souls, but why? For what? And how many others lie buried in the ruins of Erglanfoth? No, no. Focus on this one. It's imprisoned our souls in our bodies. Cut the root between 
essence and flesh, left a dwindling soul stuck in a shriveling husk. So the Adra is like the more direct conduit that holds the souls, right? That's the canister, so to say. The copper rings and filigree we see is giving it the spark, I guess, the actual electricity power of some kind. Um, so what does any of this stonework have to do with it? I guess the stonework is just decorative or, you know, acts as a shell like, oh, hey, don't touch it. It'll hurt. Or like a fence, maybe. Toe guard. Um, but once again, like those steps are very welcoming. Like, wouldn't you want to go look at it, touch it, taste it, feel it? Um, let's find out more about that stranger. I didn't see him. My assistant, he saw him. When he laughed. Said he was spooked by the cemetery. Perhaps it was already too late. I don't know what he did. But by morning, the machine was on and we were slain. People were already on the streets, complaining of neighbors and family members acting strangely. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, you do look rather sickly in skin tone and all that. You're not like the ghouls, right? Not yet, but I will be. My body is dead. My soul, imprisoned in this corpse, only makes it seem otherwise. And as the body decays, so does the mind. Until nothing is left but the hunger. The only way to forestall the process is through a regular infusion of essence. Living flesh is the only ready supply. Uh-huh. So you're much like Icantha. You're both researchers. You're both dead-ish. Um, and you both don't like each other. Why don't you guys forget about your grudges and work together to fix this something? Because I feel like this is a really bad thing that's happened. And it's bad for business, too. Because nobody's coming in here to Heritage Hill to give you money or loot, right? Because it's all gone horribly wrong, right? So I would think... You'd come together to work just as once. I'm not proud of any of it. Hunting men and women in the early days of the affliction. Picking off soldiers that came to investigate. But I'd do it again. I'll do it as long as I must to end this disaster. So why don't you go and talk with Icantha? It seems like she wants you to humble up a bit. And say, I need you, I can't, though. And, yeah, she's probably going to prod you in the ribs for it, but put your ego aside for the sake of ending the dis disaster, as you so claim. You're you're eating men, women, children, soldiers, you know, all of that, why not, so that you can end this disaster. Why not put aside the ego, too? You could help. Help me end this. Help me find sustenance. What happened to the rest of your team? You ate them? By the time I realized what had happened, the district had already been sealed. So we fed when we needed, and locked ourselves in the tower to work. And then there came a time when the hunger struck, and there was hardly anyone left. Uh-huh. How can I help? Not your help I need. It's... Heritage shrew squanders her research on frivolities, then refuses to make herself useful. Runes. The runes are the last part of the puzzle. Ekantha knows them. She gives them to you, and you can turn the machine off. Release our souls. Mm-hmm. Wait, runes? The Anguithan runes? She can read them? 
He speaks of this feat so blandly. Let's talk instead to this harridan, Roland. I pick her thoughts a time. She wasn't here the night the machine came on. Staying with her patron somewhere near. Too good to be burdened with our ignorant company. I mean, yeah, you put it right there. I'll get the words from my cat, though. Yes. Akantha. She was here. In the district. Probably here still. Always prepared. Clever lady, that one. And perhaps... You bring me something. Something to keep me sharp. Then I show you a secret about the machine. Something to make you strong. That's good for a sacrifice? Will you accept Durance? Honestly? Nah, Durance is a pretty useful priest. He gives a, some good healing to you, Adair. We need to keep him. Uh, yeah, let's just go all the way to the bottom. That's nice. On to Icantha now, huh? Oh, treasure. Alrighty, Icantha. You return. What if you come seeking this time? The words. <laughs> that fool Aldhelm. He sent you, didn't he? I can hardly believe he's had the cleverness to survive. That simpleton thinks he can understand how to use something without understanding what it is, or why it is. You feel a hot core of pride smoldering at the center of her soul. <laughs> he dabbles with ancient and powerful devices, with all the finesse of a blacksmith. He sends you here to petition me for aid after years of disparaging my research. I bet he didn't even tell you the tower's name, did he? That's his problem. Always looking for solutions without caring for meaning. So she's very prideful in her research. So let's try to appeal to her pride and maybe, maybe ask her questions and allow her to feel smart and informative, I guess. So tell me the tower's name. Ter Nuneth. It's called Ter Nuneth. They built the machine atop it to contain souls. Hold them in place. But the others I've seen, machines scattered all over the Deerwood, are relays built to move souls. How do you operate the machine? Ugh, back to these tinkers' concerns. And what would you do with these tethered souls if I told you? I don't know yet. <laughs> A level of humility rarely found in my life. Most refreshing. Mm hmm. I could help you, but I won't. The pride lodged in her soul flares up, twisting into the shape of something that writhes and squeals within her. Here I have specimens aplenty and time enough to observe them all. It's every scientist's dream. My answer is no. What? But what good is observing all this if you're going to hoard it for yourself? Tell her, Roland, an entire language at your fingertips and she hides it away. Extinguish Icantha's pride? I feel like her pride is deeply embedded in her heart. And doing that might kill her. And the knowledge may be lost. But if I kill her, I am a watcher. I might be able to just pull that from her memories maybe awaken with Icantha and just have more nightmares at night. Hmm. Uh, let's, let's continue talking. The fate of these trapped souls is more important. They're inconsequential. Their existence means nothing. They don't even understand their predicament, which you and I see so clearly. Through them, I'll accomplish more than any of my peers. And who will know about it? All I've learned, years of studying the Anguithan language, 
No one understands it better than me. That counts for something. But what use is it? Uses? Why? Let something so pure be fashioned into a blunt instrument. Your opportunities here are finite. One day that knowledge will die with you. You're wrong. But there's no conviction in her voice. I'll build it forever. I'll cling to it. That will give me something. Will there really be enough for you? It will. It must be. Teach me what you know. I'll make sure that it grows and your legacy lives on. Your words finally quench her pride and all that remind, remains is a blackened diamond. Hard rock. You cast it away where it melts into the darkness. So be it. My studies and efforts shall grow through yours. These are the words you need. Her cold, dry fingertips rest on your temples, and you feel her reaching into your mind, forming images from the darkness. Runes flash through your head, but they're no longer just pictures. They have meaning, and you understand them. They are commands. Something triggers in your mind. A distant memory unearthed from a past life long since buried. You can see a vast array of runes, far more than Icantha has shown you and you know their sound and their meaning, and how they fit together. The language of Ingwith, once more at your command. So I just learned a whole language, like that. Well, that was easy. If only it was that easy in the real world. Something has awakened in your mind. You understand far more than I ever did. Take this knowledge, then, and do what you will with Ter Nuneth. Now that you understand its purpose, it will serve you in whatever way you wish. Mm-hmm. A speaker of dead tongues now, and so he surpasses a hundred frustrated scholars in the matter of a few moments. I don't suppose you could look at a few books for me. I still don't understand why they wanted to build a machine that tethers souls. Perhaps they didn't. Perhaps that's why they built no other machines like this one. We now see the Inguithans as masters of soul manipulation, but they couldn't have attained their expertise without copious trial and error. Perhaps this was one such experiment. Certainly. Constructed to move souls, why would the Inguithans wanted to do that? Another mystery, hypothetically anywhere they wished. The real question, as always, is why? To intermix them the way a player shuffles his deck? The way a farmer rotates his field? To collect them like butterflies under glass? To melt them down for raw essence? Unfortunately, I don't know. Okay. Uh, what do I do with the tower now? Turn it off, I expect. That will be easy now that you can read the runes. The vessels would still roam, but striking them down would return their essence to the cycle. But be careful. That machine controls hundreds of souls, and that volume of essence could easily overload it. Improperly channeling the essence would destroy the machine along with the souls. It would be a terrible loss for posterity. Uh, maybe. Depends on who sees the machine blowing up. Out of the corner of his eye, Aloth gives you a sly look. It seems your ravenous new friend has just given us the key to ending this wretchedness for good. And now that we've seen what this machine is capable of, I do hope you're not squeamish about the loss of a few hundred souls. So how do the control words work? Harnessing the power of Ter Noneth is about understanding what it was to design to do. You know the words and their meanings. You can speak them and the tower shall obey. That's all. Thanks. Alrighty. Off to the tower to deal with the, with the machine. So maybe I was completely wrong about all that I thought it was going to do. Awaken people and making them watchers. 
maybe a watcher thing is like a one in a million chance and i was i i got the jackpot luckily enough or unluckily enough i don't get to sleep very much because of it which kind of sucks all righty Uh, we'll just skip all him. A jagged Adra pillar rises in front of you, encased in stonework and run through with copper veins. The panel is covered with runes, which you can now understand. You recognize words for end and for hold. The dial is currently fixed on hold. You also recognize by inscription that the manner in which you turn the dial is a means of throttling the device. Um, end is what we want, right? We don't want to just overload the device and blow it up. Right. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, it might be best to blow it up. Because what's to stop Greybeard Man from just coming back and reactivating it? What's to stop the Animancers from poking and prodding this machine and just turning it back on by accident? Right, I think we do want to overload the device. And with the, the overload, we, we do a good thing, maybe? Muttering a command, you give the dial a violent twist. The moving spires spin faster and faster, wobbling from their axes. Or axes. The light filling the machine quickly becomes too bright to behold. You look away and cover your ears, but the thunderous crash that follows shakes the floor beneath you. When you look back, the machine is in ruins, never to be used again. Are we going to watch it? Yeah, that was great. Okay. Still and silent. It's finally over. Okay. Um, why are you still here? I would assume you would have died. Okay, well. All done. Proceed to oh. the bottom. I'm guessing we're done here? Are we done here? I think it's so, yeah. So, is the, is the, the hill safe once again? There! Oh wait, no, it's the, the girl. There, that's the nice man who helped me. And thank the iron arm for it. We'll get you sorted out there to keep. The tower. It's off. Does this mean the curse on Heritage Hill is lifted? Uh, I guess. I just moved a dial around on the machine in the tower. So you turned the tower off by accident? I suppose we should wait a while and see if it's really safe. If so, um, good job. Can I get my money back? No? Fine. Oh, where to now? Copper lane, I guess. And finally, we have it. We are a hero in Defiance Bay. Moderately good. Which may mean we we can go to the archives and figure out the records for Adair's brother. That would be a nice thing. But along the way, we discovered humility and quenched someone's pride humility is after all the solid foundation of all virtues this is master barkle with brighelm recordings signing off